please welcome Quee Bean. Great. Well, um, it's been an inspiration being in band with Sean, and um, he, his free improvisation to me is, is so inspiring. So this idea of standing on stage and having no idea what's going to come out, and you just play the first note, and everything is fine. And to not be terrified, <laughs> actually, for that to be the place that you want to be. Uh, and it's become the place I want to be, actually. Um, and I suppose, why would you want to be there? And the answer for me is something I figured out a long time ago, which is asking myself, not just as an artist, but as a human being, where do you want to be? And my answer is, I want to be at the point at which ideas come into being. So that was, when I was studying theoretical, theoretical physics, that's where I wanted to be, and I realized it probably wasn't going to happen. <laughs> like a new, new idea. So not just building on ideas that had come before and adding your little pile of, your little grain to the top of the pile of sand, to actually be at the point where a new idea comes into being. And I realized that I already have a place where I can do that very effectively, and that place is the fiddle. And, uh, my relationship with the fiddle, uh, I started out as a traditional Irish musician who played tunes and um, viewed a tune as there was a way to play a tune, and this was the correct version, and you then make clever variations to impress people. <laughs> 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 and that's kind of the model that um, I grew up with and that a lot of my peers uh, used. And there came a point at which I realized that that is not necessarily the most interesting way to view a tune. And I, I did not playing the fiddle, this realization came about when I went interrailing as a 17-year-old. And I uh, bought my ticket that allows you to go on any train in all of Europe. And I drew out my, uh, my itinerary. And I was in Lille, and I wanted to get the train to Barcelona and I knew exactly the time I had to be there, and I was running late, and I ran and ran, and got to the, the uh, locker where my rucksack was, grabbed the rucksack, threw it in my bag, ran, 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 and there was the train pulling out, and my whole world, my next three weeks, crumbled in front of my eyes, and I was so sad, so sad about this, and I turned around and looked up, and you know those beautiful uh, destination boards in European train stations, mm -hmm. and there was Barcelona just going <laughs> 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 and the rest of the board went <laughs> And I now saw this list of all the cities in Europe, um, and they became possibilities for me. At that moment, I could choose anywhere to go. So I had this one place I wanted to go, and instead of achieving that one aim, I now had vast possibilities. I could take a train to Moscow, I could take a train to Rome, I chose Berlin, and I went to Berlin, and it was the start of a wonderful adventure of three weeks, but it was also the start of uh, an entire way of being and of living, and not just of playing the fiddle or uh, taking trains, but every <laughs> single step that I take. Um, instead of just walking uh, step after step, I'm aware of when I lift my foot and it's about to go down there, I might put it there or two millimeters to the left or two millimeters to the right uh, or way over here or around like this. Or, but it's the awareness of that possibility in every single moment and every action you take. And that's something that has informed how I play the fiddle massively. So going back to my analogy of traditional music and this one correct version of the tune that you make intelligent variations of. Something about the traditional musicians I really love is that you can sense not alone the one thing they chose to do, but all the things they could have done. So you can see them standing on that cliff, and you can feel them as their foot is coming down. You can feel the choice being made. So you're not executing a pre-planned move. You're actually truly being in the moment and uh, fully aware of all the possibilities. And to me, that's actually uh, my definition of mastery. Um, what I seek when I play the fiddle is not to execute with total control a pre-planned um, presentation. It's to be truly in the moment and aware of all the possibilities of anything that could happen. 
So that's what, I, what I'm aiming for when I play the fiddle. Um, and that's just me with the fiddle and the bow. So what happens when I ask myself, how do I want to apply that to, let's say, using technology? And um, part of my answer to that is that, of course, I could uh, come up with a clever thing that will impress everybody, and there's like my package, and I now present my package, and the next concert I go to, I do exactly the same thing. But actually, for me, as a human being, that's not that interesting. That's me executing uh, something that's already dead. So how can I make something that's alive, that's organic, that's truly becoming, uh, coming into existence in the moment as I play it? So going back to what I stated, where do I want to be? I want to be at the, the point at which ideas come into existence. So how can I interact with electronics in a way that is true to that? Um, and, and again, my choice is to make something myself, not to take something off a shelf that somebody else has made and learn how to use it, but actually write the code myself. And I'm not very good at writing code. Uh, it's full of bugs. It's, um, it's probably pretty lame. But there's something about it which I value very highly, and that is that it's something I've made myself. And there's a fundamental difference for me in your relationship to something that you make yourself versus something that you buy. So, for instance, I love to, to make things with my hands. In fact, when I was, I think, nine years old, um, I was out in the shed. Myself and my dad used to make all sorts of things. He was a computer engineer, and we made robots, and like he made his own computer. And, um, but the moment that really um, had, a, had a major impact in my life was making these silly little keyrings out of wood. And it felt like five minutes had passed. And I was called in for my dinner, and it was actually five hours. And I remember saying to myself at the age of nine, uh, or thereabouts, that whatever I do with my life, I wanted to have that property where time just disappears. So I guess a modern way we can describe that is being in the state of flow. Um, and I get that from playing the fiddle, I get that from writing code, but you might also get it from cooking or sewing or knitting or whatever, whatever your activities from playing golf, I don't know. <laughs> we all have our things that um, where time just disappears, and um, so that's a property, again, that, that I really want to bring to my relationship to, to technology. Um, can I relate to it in a way where time disappears? And um, can I make it myself? And why would you make something yourself? Why, why not buy a clever program that somebody has invested a lot of money and a lot of time and got very bright minds to create? Well, there's question of evolution. So when you make something yourself, you can uh, evolve it over time. You can change things. You can reach in and take out components and reroute them. Um, and you have, you have that relationship to it. You know how it's put together, so you can take it apart, so you can reconfigure it. Um, but also, there's a fundamental different difference in feeling towards something that you've made yourself. Every time, like I've one of my, the objects that gives me most joy is an iPad case that I made out of an old bit of leather. <laughs> and every time I pick it up, it just gives me so much satisfaction. <laughs> and I wouldn't get that if I'd bought the same thing, exactly the same object on eBay or on Etsy. And somebody else had put that exact same time in. The object is exactly the same. But the fact that I made it myself actually imbues my interaction with it, with something very special. And so I, I want that property with my interaction with, uh, with technology. So there's, there's some of the things that I really value. Um, I guess the, the idea of uh, being aware of a vast number of possibilities at every moment, rather than executing one single plan. Um, the idea of making something yourself. The idea that it can evolve over time and become richer. Um, so. With that introduction, I might play you some fiddle. Um, another, another thing I've been doing uh, with the fiddle is 
uh, as Sean was kind of describing with his instruments, the idea of giving yourself a limitations actually can help you get into a state of flow. So you have this thing where you know it upside down, inside out. And one of the tricks I do with the fiddle is I tune it in weird ways where I have no frame of reference anymore. I don't know where to put my fingers. And I get ideas for free. I'm not in total control. And that idea of relinquishing control is, again, like a fundamental thing that I keep coming back to. So it might be a combination with something with my arm, that it's a physical gesture that I repeat rather than a musical gesture. And the fact that I'm controlling the physical gesture but not the musical outcome, I'm, I'm releasing control of the sound to this physical gesture. And uh, so, so, for instance, um, let's say... So here we have a delay. So you're locked into a grid-like structure. So for me, that's a little less interesting because immediately you're already locked in. You're kind of in this straitjacket. So what do I do about that? Um, I introduce some idea of randomness. So that, that delay is exactly a certain length long. And what happens now if I stretch it and expand and contract it? So this idea, in a way, comes from playing with Brown Don Begley over here, who's an extraordinary accordion player from around here. And when I play uh, polkas and slides with Brown Don, the only way I can kind of stay, uh, keep up with them, is if I kind of release my idea of time. And so the idea of kind of this elastic sense of time that, uh, because polkas and slides are for dancing, right? So bodies in motion, the idea of gravity at play, the idea of human beings going in circles or going in straight lines. And so kind of, let's say, get rid of your idea of time being something that's made by a metronome. How about a basketball now that sometimes you bounce it a bit higher and it takes a bit longer to come back, back down to earth? So can we have a bit more of a stretchy sense of time? So that's, for instance, um, I've got a bit of randomness on another button here, so <laughs> 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 I'm going to record a random bit of stuff in and it'll chop it up. So.
Thank you. I'm running, running that all off this little Raspberry Pi, which is, uh, was an idea suggested by Sean and a, and a drive on one of our gigs, but it's lovely not to have a laptop on stage, no screen. But it's, it's just this tiny little credit card sized box. And, um, and I have this foot controller, but I'd really like to get rid of this. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I've been, you know. We could auction I, it off to the audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the idea of using sensors. And I've, I kind of went away and learned how to code. I've been using this language called Chuck. And that's what I'm running on this. It's a, a, a language that's specifically for music, but it's, it's kind of structured, you know, a bit like C or something like that. And, um, and yeah, that's the, they're the questions I've been asking myself, but I love the idea of using sensors um, or, you know, gesture, integrating gesture instead of looking down and having to push a certain button. Uh, I've written a little thing that'll recognize a chunk of melody and use that as a trigger. Instead of pushing a button, I can just play a sequence of notes and that'll set off a sequence of events. Um, so yeah, there's, there's I, I'm kind of at the beginning of all of this. I've just been coding for the last couple of months and um, it's very exciting. So yeah, thanks very much. <laughs>